Now, let me explain about devices. With KV, you can program by using a device as well as using a variable. Device means a memory provided to KV as a default. Unlike variables, you can use the device without defining a name and a data type. With KV, functions allocated to the unit, such as this servo on and servo ready, can be allocated to a device. The device consists of the bit device to store the on-off data, the word device to store numeral values, the timer, and the counter. When you program by using the device, you can create a program as shown here. Devices are displayed with the device name and the device number. DM is the device name, and 100 is the device number. Now, I will explain about the device notation. The first one is a bit device. Bit devices are displayed with the device name and the device number. There are several device names. R is the device which the unit function is allocated. MR is the internal auxiliary relay which turns on off only in the program. LR is the device which memorizes the on information even when the power is off. CR is the device which the PLC system information is allocated. In the device number, the last two digits indicate the bit position, and other digits indicate the channel number. There are 16 bits for the bit position from 0 to 15. Therefore, M15 is bit 15 of the 0th channel of MR. The bit positions are from 0 to 15. Therefore, the next bit of MR15 is bit 0 of the first channel. Therefore, it is MR100 rather than MR16. For the device called B which is used for Ethernet IP communications, all device numbers are displayed in the hex number from 0 to F. Therefore, the last digit becomes 0 to F, indicating the bit position. And other digits indicate the channel number. Please see the capture here. This MR306 indicates bit 6 of the third channel in the device called MR. It does not mean 306th bit of MR. In case of the word device, the numeral value indicates the channel number directly. There are following device names. DM is the one in which unit function is allocated. EM and ZF stores the data in the program, and the PLC system data is allocated in CM. As you can see here, DM20 is the 20th channel of DM. However, in case of the device called W used for Ethernet IP communications, all numbers indicating the channel number become hex numbers. For example, the channel number is indicated with hex numbers such as WFF. In addition, this section explains about constants. Constants with sharp attached are the decimal numbers. Constants with dollar attached are the hex numbers. When a decimal number is used for a constant, use a sharp mark. With KV Studio, when only a number is entered, sharp is automatically added, and the number is handled as a decimal number. Therefore, if the number needs to be handled as a hex number, add dollar in front of the number when entering a program. Now, I will explain how to program by using devices. Before entering a program, let me introduce useful functions for programming by using a devices. This function is called device comment. When a comment is added to the device, the comment is displayed under the device in the latter program. The role of the device can be displayed. Therefore, readability of the program improves. As well promoting readability, device comments are also useful when entering a program. Double click the menu of KV Studio to set a device comment. This window opens. Switch to the device to enter a comment. You can enter a comment here. Switch the device and enter the same comment to DM as well.
Entering a comment is completed. Now, let's create a program. When creating a program by using devices, enter a device name and a device number. In addition to programming using devices, when a part of the device comment is entered, devices with the same device comment are displayed as candidates. Thus, setting device comments reduces the hours spent programming. As you can see, device comments are searched and displayed as candidates. I've just entered move.u, and this.u is called a suffix. This symbol is used to indicate the data type handled by the instructions. I will explain about the suffix later. I've entered .u, and press the Enter key. However, you can see nothing is displayed after move although .u was entered. If no suffix is displayed, please recognize that the suffix is .u. As I explained, the suffix is used to indicate the data type handled by the instructions. In some instructions, a suffix changes the data type to handle. There are seven types of suffixes. The data size and use of a sign are different. .u means one word unsigned integer. .s means one word signed integer. In the same way, .d and .l mean two word unsigned and signed integers, respectively. .f is a suffix for a single precision floating point type. .df is an abbreviation of double float, and is a suffix for a double precision floating point type. There is also the suffix .a. .a is a suffix which can be used only when a variable is used for the instruction. Depending on the data type of the variable, the data size handled by the instruction is automatically determined. When a device is specified in the instruction, a suffix .a is not available. Now, let me explain about the data size of each suffix. I will use examples of each suffix added to a move instruction. Let's use an example of copying dm0 value to dm10 by using a move instruction. First. I'll explain about move.u and move.s. The difference between them is with or without a sign. However, because both types handle one word, one word in dm0 is copied to one word in dm10. Then, I'll explain about move.d, move.l, and move.f. The difference between .d and .l is with or without a sign. .f handles two words single precision floating point type. All of them are suffixes occupying two words. Therefore, two words in dm0 and dm1 are copied to two words of dm10 and dm11. Finally, I'll explain about move.df. It is a suffix for a double precision floating point type occupying four words. Thus, Occupied four words from DM0 to DM3 are copied to four words of from DM10 to DM13. As you can see, when move DM0 DM10 is simply written, the range of occupied devices varies depending on the trailing suffix of move. Now, I'll explain how the actual data changes according to the different suffixes. Here, please enter a program. This time, move.l is used with a sign and a two-word suffix. Let's transfer this project to PLC. The transfer is completed. To check the value stored in DM0 and DM2, Register these devices to the window called the Registration Monitor window. On this window, you can check the data to be stored to the devices. Right-click here and select Registration Monitor window. The window opens. 
the suffix .l is added to dm0 and dm2. It means they are registered to be displayed in a 32-bit format with a sign. This time, let's store a value of minus 200,000 to the transfer source dm0. When this MR500 is turned on, the move instruction is executed. Then, the value stored in DM0 is copied to DM2. Now, let's turn on MR500 by double clicking. As you see, minus 200,000 is copied to DM2. On the registration monitor window, you can switch the display style. First, let's change DM0. Currently, Minus 200,000 is stored. Minus 200,000 is displayed in order to display the 32-bit two-word binary data of DM0 and DM1 in assigned format. Let's change the display style to an unsigned 16-bit format. Now, the displayed data changed. This is when the one-word 16-bit binary data of DM0 is interpreted as an unsigned format. When it is changed to a signed format with the same 16-bit data, the displayed number changes as this. The binary data itself stored in DM0 is the same. The same binary data changes the display when the suffix is changed. As for example, the display format for .u, the display format for .s, and so on. In the same way, let's change this DM2 to the unsigned 32-bit format which corresponds to the suffix .d. Now the displayed data changed. Both shows two words of DM2 and DM3, the binary data stored in 32-bit. The difference is to see the data as .l with a sign or as .d without a sign. As explained, the data size is the same for .u and .s, or for .l and .d. The difference is how to interpret the stored binary data as signed or unsigned. Now, I'll explain about the control relay CR and the control memory CM. Within CR and CM, the PLC system data are stored. You can check the stored data by selecting control relay on the window which you entered the device comment in the previous explanation. For example, let's display CRs after number 2000. These data are stored in CR. In order to use a device which is always on or a device which turns on every second, use CR. Now, let's change the display to CM. For example, numbers after number 700 of CM have the PLC calendar data stored. Let's register the data after CM700 to this registration monitor window. Enter CM700 and press the Enter key. Then, register in consecutive numbers. Place a cursor on a line below the line displaying CM700. Press the Control key and the I key on the keyboard together. You can register the devices of the consecutive device numbers automatically. Now you can see that the PLC calendar data are stored. In order to use the data like this, use CM. To check other data allocated to CR and CM, see the user's manual of the CPU unit. You can open the user's manual from this menu of KV Studio. A list of CR and CM is displayed on the cover. You can jump to the desired section by clicking. So if you need to check the stored data, see the user's manual of the CPU unit.
Let me explain some more about CR2002, a device which is always on, which was in CR section. In the PLC of KV series, CR2002 is set as an execution condition for the programs to be always on. In the KV series, you cannot write the connection to the bus without any device. If you try to convert without any device, a conversion error is output. So please set CR2002 as an execution condition for the programs to be always on.